If you're living with diabetes and you've started forgetting names, losing your train of thought, or walking into a room wondering, why am I here? It might not just be getting older. It might be your blood sugar roller coaster. But here's the good news. You can do something about that. By the end of this video, you'll understand what glycemic variability is, why it quietly damages the brain in type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and the hopeful part how stabilizing your sugars, often with a lower carb ketogenic or carnivore approach, can protect and in some cases improve your memory over time using real science, not wishful thinking. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, a board certified family and obesity medicine physician with a master's in nutrition and functional medicine. And I've spent my career helping patients heal by getting to the root cause and not just chasing numbers. This topic is personal for me because I see many patients, smart, educated, doing their best, who are terrified of both diabetes and dementia. If you have diabetes and have noticed changes in your memory or thinking, drop brain in the comments and tell me one symptom you're worried about. You're not alone. And stick with me because a bit later, I'll share a trial where people with early memory problems actually did better on memory tests after going into nutritional ketosis. If you've been feeling hopeless, you'll want to hear that part. Here's the big idea of this video. The real threat to your memory and diabetes isn't just a high A1C. It's years of sugar and insulin swings, beating up blood vessels and neurons in a brain that was never designed for that level of chaos. So let's talk about what's actually happening. When most people hear diabetes and dementia, they think, my A1C is a little high. That's bad for my brain, right? That's part of it. But the more dangerous villain is glycemic variability. Glycemic variability is the day-to-day -day and hour-to-hour -hour swinging of your sugar. Up with that morning bagel, down with that extra insulin. Up again with the snack, crashing in the afternoon. Same A1C, very different ride. Your continuous glucose monitor, if you wear one, shows this as peaks, crashes, and time in range. A 2023 meta-analysis in PLOS1 looked at nine studies of people with type 2 diabetes and found that higher short-term glucose swings measured by things like MAGE and standard deviation were consistently linked to worse cognitive scores. About a moderate negative correlation. Think of it this way. Every spike bathes brain cells in sugar, creating advanced glycation end products, oxidative stress, and inflammation. Every crash starves the brain of fuel, especially dangerous in people who already have vascular disease or long-standing diabetes. Over time, this hurts the tiny vessels, the white matter, and especially the hippocampus, the memory center that helps you remember where you put your keys and what you just read. In type 2 diabetes, a 2025 meta-analysis found that about 40 to 45% of patients meet criteria for mild cognitive impairment, that middle ground between normal aging and dementia. People with diabetes overall have roughly a 1.25 to 1.9 times the risk of cognitive impairment compared with those without diabetes. Type 1s are not spared either. Years of highs, lows, and severe hypoglycemia are associated with changes in brain structure and function, especially in attention and memory domains, even in younger adults. Now here's where it gets really important and hopeful. A massive cohort study in JAMA Neurology followed over 250,000 people with type 2 diabetes for almost six years. The group whose A1C was in the 6 to 7 range most of the time had the lowest dementia risk. People who spent most of their time at 9% or higher had about a 70% higher risk of dementia. So your past glucose history matters, but it's not destiny. If high, Erratic sugars push risk up, but it also means that calming the roller coaster is your opportunity to push that risk back down. Let's bust a big myth here. The myth is, if my A1C is okay, my brain is safe. The mechanism says two people can have an A1C of 7.2, one with gentle, stable sugars between 90 and 150 most of the day, the other bouncing from 50 to 300. Same A1C, totally different stress on the brain. 
that PLOS1 meta-analysis showed that, independent of A1C, more glucose fluctuation was linked with worse cognition. And a Korean cohort study showed that people whose fasting glucose bounced around more over five years had significantly higher dementia risk later on. So the goal isn't a perfect A1C at any cost. The goal is safe, stable fuel to the brain. Good time and range, fewer big spikes and crashes. Now, how do we actually do that in real time? Here's the practical prescription, laid out like I would for a patient in clinic. Of course, this is educational, not personal medical advice, so always work with your own team. First, what to start? Shift your plate toward lower carb, higher protein, higher healthy fat. Think eggs, beef, poultry, fish, Greek yogurt if you tolerate dairy, plus non-starchy veggies if you're not aiming to become carnivore like me. Many of my patients do very well on a low carb or ketogenic pattern that keeps post-meal sugars from spiking in the first place. And some choose the simplicity of carnivore. Prioritize real food over ultra processed food. We're trading cereal, juice, and pastries for steak, salmon, eggs, and above ground veggies. Walk your sugar down. 10 to 15 minutes of walking after meals can significantly blunt glucose spikes and improve insulin sensitivity over time. Track patterns, not just numbers. Use a CGM or finger sticks to learn. What does this meal do to my brain? If your sugar is swinging 80 points up and down all day, that's a red flag for your cognition. Next, what to stop or minimize. Frequent snacking on high glycemic foods, crackers, potato chips, granola bars, Diabetic sweets. Most people do better if they don't snack at all. Sugary beverages, juices, and so-called healthy smoothies that flood the brain with glucose. Mindless late night eating. Nighttime hyperglycemia plus poor sleep is a double hit to the brain. What I measure beyond A1C, time in range. For many adults with diabetes, that's often 70 to 150 milligrams per deciliter, but your target may be individualized. Hypoglycemic episodes, especially if you're type one or on insulin or sulfurureas. Simple cognitive self-checks. How often are you forgetting appointments? Repeating stories stories, losing items. Bring this data to your doctor. Don't hide it out of shame. Let's talk about objections and real world challenges. But I'm type one. Isn't keto dangerous for me? Type ones absolutely can benefit from reducing glycemic variability, but it has to be done carefully with a knowledgeable team because of the risk of hypoglycemia. The principle, fewer rapid acting carbs, more stable protein and fat. It's still powerful, but insulin adjustments and safety monitoring are critical. I already have mild cognitive impairment. Am I doomed to develop dementia? No, mild cognitive impairment is a risk state, not a sentence. In the general population, maybe 10 to 15% of people with mild cognitive impairment progress to dementia each year, but a meaningful chunk improve or remain stable, especially when risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, sleep, and physical activity are aggressively addressed. In type 2 diabetes, recent analyses emphasize that malcognitive impairment is potentially reversible and that early intervention can substantially reduce dementia progression. Is there any proof that being in ketosis helps the brain, or is that just another internet trend? We actually have some encouraging data. Again, not magic, but real. One randomized controlled trial put older adults with malcognitive impairment on a very low carb ketogenic diet for six weeks. Their memory scores improved and the improvement tracked with ketone levels. The paper is titled, Dietary Ketosis Enhances Memory and Malcognitive Impairment. I'll link it in the description so you can read it for yourself. Another trial used a ketogenic medium chain triglyceride MCT drink for six months in people with malcognitive impairment and found improvements in several cognitive domains. Mechanistically, ketones does the following provide a cleaner fuel to neurons with insulin resistance, sometimes called type 3 diabetes of the brain, generate less oxidative stress than glucose, and can boost antioxidant defenses in the hippocampus, may reduce amyloid and tau pathology in animal models, and improve mitochondrial function. So we have biologically plausible mechanisms plus early RCTs showing memory improvement, especially in early stages. Quick pause. If this is helpful so far, hit that like button so that YouTube shows
shows this to more people scared about dementia. And if you're new here, subscribe so you don't miss future videos on using food and lifestyle as medicine. Let me give you one lesser known insight that I share with so many science loving patients. It's not just how high your sugar goes, it's the texture of your metabolic life. In that giant JAMA neurology study, what really drove dementia risk was years of being in that 9% plus zone. In the mild cognitive impairment with diabetes meta-analysis, high hemoglobin A1C, insulin resistance, hypertension, smoking, and low education all stack the deck towards cognitive decline but those are exactly the levers lifestyle and good medical care can pull. And here's the hopeful twist. Other analyses suggest that up to 40% of dementia cases worldwide may be preventable or delayable by managing modifiable risk factors. Diabetes, blood pressure, obesity, inactivity, hearing loss, sleep, and so on. You're not powerless and you are not just your genes. So let's recap this in 20 seconds. Root cause, diabetes, especially with large glucose swings, stresses and injures the brain over years, increasing the risk of memory problems and dementia. Action, calm the roller coaster. Fewer refined carbs, more protein and healthy fat, more movement, better sleep. And when appropriate, a supervised low carb ketogenic or carnivore approach to improve time and range. Expect the change. Over months to years, you're not only improving A1C and time and range, you're giving your brain a steadier fuel supply, lowering inflammation and oxidative stress, and increasing the odds that early cognitive changes stabilize or even improve. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Comment the word hope and tell me one small change you're willing to make for your brain over the next seven days. Maybe it's cutting out sugary drinks, taking a 10 minute walk after dinner, or talking to your doctor about using a continuous glucose meter. Your brain is not broken, it's talking to you. And if you're willing to listen and change the fuel you give it, there is real hope that you can think clearer, remember more, and enjoy the life you're working on so hard to build.